Hello YouTubers, this is Victorious Nick. I am going to be preaching within half an hour um, an expositional sermon. It has to be under 10 minutes long, so I can't say everything that I want to say. Um, glory be to God nonetheless, even though it's short, <laughs> it's a little sermonette. The title of this message is going to be called Another Gospel. And the text is from Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. In the back of our Christian minds, we all subconsciously know the importance of the gospel message, in that this totally depraved, dying, sinful world is in need of the Savior, Jesus Christ. But how many of us know the gospel? The sermons that you hear from week to week, and even on the internet, are they messages that clearly explain the gospel? There's about 25 of us here. If each one of us were asked, what's the gospel, and I handed out a sheet, and uh, we all had our responses, how many of, of those responses would line up to what the gospel is, as according to scripture? So my first point for you today is this. Um, it's from Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. What is perverting the gospel and removing some from the faith of Christ? Let's take a look at the text. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. The reason that the Apostle Paul, he wrote the Galatian church was because there was false teachers who always followed him at all these churches that he went to. Uh, there was Judaizers, that, those were the guys who were um, troubling the gospel. And they were attacking the central truths of the gospel. They were perverting it. And Paul was astonished in a very negative way in how the Galatians, they were just falling away so quickly right after he came there and he was preaching. So at the very beginning of the chapter, he, he says his brief salutations, then he goes right into the, the beef of the matter. Um, the false teachers, they were undercutting the gospel of grace. And these false teachers were misleading the believers at Galatia down a path of self-righteousness. And these Judaizers, they were essentially adding on to their Old Testament law, adding on Christianity to their Old Testament law, and they were like trying to gain converts to Judaism. And they were essentially preaching another gospel. And you may be asking, why is this passage relevant for us today? Is it still possible are other gospels being preached today? Are, do they look exactly like the same like this? And if so, what do they look like? False teaching, unfortunately, it still occurs today. Um, the te around 1900, the tenets of Eastern mysticism and occultism, they were finding their way into the church, often under the guise of spiritually neutral philosophy, psychology, or self-image improvement. There are false gospels that pervert the real gospel and that sway people away from the truth of Jesus Christ. Point number two, are you being influenced by another gospel that is accursed? Let's look at verses eight and nine. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Verse nine, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. As I mentioned earlier, Paul was warning of these false teachers who were coming in and creeping into the churches. And they were using all their heretical might to deceive as many as they could from the truth. And the Galatian believers, they bought into this because these teachers, they said they were of the company of Paul, and they even appeared to be godly, and they had really smooth words and smooth talkers and this even happens today. Um, they preached another gospel which was accursed, plain and simple. Um, recognizing accursed false teachers is one thing, but what, it, what happens if um, a Christian who is genuine, such as maybe someone here, you're genuine in your faith, but you preach another gospel, and you only want what's right, but what happens if you preach another gospel? Is it possible that another gospel can be taught by, by you or even me? 
The gospel message is watered down today behind many pulpits. And yes, even in this very town. And how did this come about? Well, as I was saying, around 1900, all these, these Eastern um, philosophies, they've just crept into many churches undetected. Um, these popular movements, they've, they've blinded people, plain and simple. And as a result, because these things have crept in, it's affected our, our urgency and the way that we, we preach. We, we do not preach. We do not tell people, the main thing, we do not tell people that they are sinners. And we don't tell them that they must repent because we're afraid what they might believe of us. Or, you know, they, we, we, oh, we might offend them. And, um, so we'd rather tell them a lot of our things just to put them at ease. We might tell them true things, but we don't cut to the heart of the matter. And we rarely mention sin and repentance in our sermons. And when we do, it's very, very light. And it even breaks my heart. There's, um, there's men out there, really popular in the evangelical world. They brag about not even preaching the S word, sin, or the R word, repentance. These men, they brag about this stuff. And it's, it's awful. Um, they preach about having your best life now, love wins out, having prosperity, the wealth. They preach everything else except for the gospel. And there's no urgency in their messages either. Um, and whenever, whenever they do preach, it's like, oh, like, let's open our Bibles. It's like they're, they're apologizing to them for preaching the scriptures and preaching for sin and repentance because they're doing it lightly. I want to share an illustration with you. Let's say that I'm a medical doctor and I have someone come into my office, they're, they're not saved, and they're, they're dying of cancer. I, I, I do some tests on them. After examining them, uh, I know that they're going to die really soon. They have a terminal cancer. They don't know that, though. So, as a professional, how should I cut the news to them? Should I go in there and, with a big smile on my face, tell them a joke or something? Now, we don't open a lot of our sermons with jokes nowadays, do we? I'm going to tell this person in all seriousness, look, you're, you're dead. You're dying. And um, I'm going to tell them like, to seek out medical help if they can. Now, let's translate that back into as a preacher. As a preacher, I'm going to say, you're dying. And yes, there is a cure. And it involves the S word and the R word. So... I need to tell them in all seriousness that their life is in danger. Um, Charles Spurgeon, he quoted Richard Baxter, uh, a, a really awesome preacher back in the day in England. He said, Richard Baxter said, he was talking about preachers, he says, they do not preach with the urgency of a dying man to dying men. And there has to be that urgency in our preaching today. Um, we don't preach the true gospel because we probably don't know the true gospel. We've probably never heard the real gospel uh, explained to us clearly. And are you preaching another gospel which is accursed? Or listening to another gospel which is accursed? My third point for you today is this. Um, the messages that you're listening to or preaching, do they please man or do they please God? Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. As I said before, there's a strong chance that, we've been, that you and I, we've been listening to many false messages over time. But that's just the problem. When we listen to these messages, they affect our theology and we conjure up, conjure up and make our own definition of the gospel. That's the problem. It's not the biblical definition. Um, we don't listen to the preaching that, that really stresses the R word and the S word in our sermons either. And these, as I was saying before, these false teachers who give you your best life now, or that loved one's out, um, they present Jesus as an accessory, as an add-on to the faith. And these are not the gospel messages, but they're accursed. And if this is true, if you listen to these people that are preaching these messages, they're, they're not the servant of Christ. And if you m uh, mimic what they say, you're not the servant of Christ either. So I plead with you, all of you, get to know the real gospel. That's, it's rare, rarely heard these days. And it is only by this, by this type of preaching that sinners 
they come to Christ. The Holy Spirit moves on them and they convict people in an authentic, genuine matter. So I beg of you, look into the preachers, look into their sermons, into their theology, into their studies. Preachers who actually preach the gospel. Uh, the Leonard Ravenhills, the Charles Spurgeons, the Paul Washers, the Francis Chans of the Gospel Coalition. Look into the, these preachers and one beautiful thing about all these preachers, all of their gospel messages line up perfectly. They preach the gospel. So I want to encourage all you guys. Saturate yourself in the only gospel message, lest you be accursed. Amen.